Hello, and welcome to the Brave Hearts Bold Minds podcast, Growing Fine Young Men. I'm Lee Hatcher. Thanks for joining me as we explore a whole world of ideas and inspiration as we seek to help the boys of today grow into the fine young men of tomorrow. Each week, I'll be interviewing an educator from the Scots College in Sydney to find out how best to build a boy, to offer all parents of school-age boys practical ideas and strategies to shape the character of a young man for life and for good. So, let's ring the bell and meet our guest for this week's podcast. With me today is John Creerer. John is head of the preparatory school and deputy principal at the Scots College, and his topic is Boys Need a Structured Discipline Plan. John, thanks for popping in. Thank you, Lee. Lovely to be here. And great to meet you. When it comes to discipline in schools, John, people have been long complaining that there's a discipline crisis in education, in society. How do you see it? It's interesting. Discipline crisis, I I wouldn't describe it as such, but I would say there's a crisis in confidence amongst many parents when it comes to how to discipline the child. There's lots of talk, both in psychological school, if you like, and also in, in, in the normal school, on how best to discipline children. In the end, though, you know, there's the the saying that eat, drink and be merry for tomorrow we die. The problem is we actually don't die tomorrow. We actually we go on to reap the negative consequences of uh, poor behaviour or the positive consequences of good behaviour. It's interesting that you highlight the issue for parents. It's kind of a crisis of confidence in parents. Yeah, there is. I think there's a confidence issue when it comes to being a loving authority when it, when it comes to the parent. I don't think children want or need another friend. A parent is, while they, they love their children, children don't want them to be their mate or their peer. They actually want a parent that's going to be a loving authority who cares and will do anything for them. You say we need structures to assist boys to be disciplined, even self-disciplined. What are those structures going to look like, John? How will they work? Boys need structures in terms of they need to know where they're going. They need to know, firstly, what the expectations are and what happens if they move to the right and left of those expectations. They don't like a laissez-faire environment. They want to know what the consequences are going to be and they're comfortable within those structures. When it comes to family life and it comes to classroom experiences, if the boys know more about what's expected, what's going to happen if they don't meet those expectations, what happens when they do meet those expectations, that's a security blanket for them. And so they're aware and they're quite relaxed and feel free within those structures. It's going to take time and it's going to be the the reality that the parent needs to be bothered or the teacher needs to be bothered to explain those structures, those boundaries, if you like, for a boy. Yeah, absolutely. Whether it's at home or in the classroom, the explanation, that that, that step of training up the child is an important one. We can have our consequences for poor behaviour and, and good behaviour, but unless we explain clearly what the expectations are, Boys aren't going to know what to do. And that's particularly important as a young child. We don't expect a boy who's in kindergarten to be behaving like a year six boy or a year 10 boy. (laughs) However, if they know what the expectations are and what they look like, that makes them feel comfortable in the environment. Yeah. You say it's quite important to consider each boy's personality type. So the discipline for a quite shy boy may be entirely different to that of an outgoing, robust boy. That's exactly right. I think parents know that, especially parents of more than a a single child, know that each member of their family is different. So (laughs) Sure are. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, for my case, how we disciplined our son was very different to our our daughter. For our son, it only needed a wink to get him back online. For our daughter, it needed much more than a wink. It needed a stronger form of discipline, a stronger consequence so that she would know the right thing to do and what the expectations are. It's interesting that you can kind of discipline even with a look. That's it's a right. very powerful no, thing. No, and it's very powerful in the classroom. A look, one of the things that children don't like is to know that they've let their parents down or let their teacher down. And sometimes a look is, is a good enough for mm. moving forward. But if you bring strong discipline to that child who just needs a look... You could possibly crush them. You could. Yeah. You could. With, with, with some children, you could crush them with a look. And so how you treat each individual child needs to be really dependent upon their personality type. Yes. And that's an art. It's an art as a parent. It's an art as a teacher to and know the, 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 the right way to move when it comes to developing discipline within the child. And your, your, your hope always is that they would be self-disciplined as they grow. Yeah. I'm often hearing from experts in education, like you in our podcast, that boys need and love, as you said before, structure 
own routine, to know what's expected of them. Does that make discipline easier? I think, you think? boys knowing their expectations certainly makes things easier. My experience in classes is that the teachers that have the most well-disciplined classes are rarely disciplined. The That's boys interesting. Know, yeah, the boys know their structures, they know the expectations, they're corrected on behaviour that may not be complementary to those expectations, and so they're comfortable there. It's very rare that you would have a class that's well-disciplined that you didn't have a teacher that's teaching them and training them along the road. Sometimes mm. it might be easier for a teacher or a parent to just kind of let it go. Yeah, that's but, right. But are you saying that they, they need to be mm. stepping up to this, be vigilant? I, I think an important thing is to understand that whatever we accept, we teach. So if the boys are lining up in the morning and in, in, the, in the class context and we accept that they're not lining up correctly and we don't correct them, that's what they accept and, and, and that's what they think is the normal routine. And it's the same in the, same in the home. Whatever we accept, we're teaching them that that's the way it is. And so it is a training process. It's a constant process, a constant process of correction and commendation, but it is a, it's a process through life. Yeah. Mm. Indeed. <laughs> Two phrases from the John Creer, Book of Wisdom. Discipline is a friend for life. That's number one. Second, a good dose of humour is part of discipline. Please explain. Okay. Well, a discipline is a, is a friend for life. I think if we have a, a discipline process whereby it is always negative and it's always trying to find the faults of someone, they won't appreciate that of course, as, a, yeah. as, as a friend. But when it's a... It's, it's, presented in the, in the context of a loving authority figure or figures that are there for the children, trying to correct them and guide them through life, they will, see, they will come to know that discipline is a friend. I mean, you know, every day is a day of discipline. Getting up early, getting your bag ready, coming to school, showing discipline in the playground, and you're going to fail. The boys will fail and girls will fail, but they can get back on that road and there's a means by which they, they, they can get back on that road, understanding that in the end... That discipline is going to be a friend that'll take you into adulthood and further. Mm. They need to know that you're on their side. Absolutely. One of the things that we insist upon, even when there is a serious disciplinary issue, is that at the end of speaking with the boy and providing a consequence, that we do ask them, do you understand and do you think this is a fair consequence? So that they actually see that that is a consequence of behaviour that's going to happen in life and they can be accepting of it and then moving on every new day is a fresh start. What about the humour thing? How's, <laughs> how does that fit? Well, I think that in, in the end, we all fail. <laughs> and we, there's always times when we are undisciplined. And when it comes to humour, boys can laugh. They love to laugh at themselves. And boys are very, very, very funny people. <laughs> and so in, as, as we all know, when we look back at our lives and the times that we've failed, when we've been undisciplined, we Hilarious. can laugh about that. We can laugh about it. <laughs> yes, you can actually. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's important to realise that. And what it actually says that no one is going to be perfect. No one ever reaches perfection. But along the road, there's going to be times of celebration. There's going to be times where things that we do are wrong, but they're funny and we move on. For a parent, for a teacher, you need to be careful being that kind of authority figure in how you wield that authority. You argue against authority for authority's sake, but rather authority for love's sake. What's that look like? How do you apply that? Mm, that's a very important thing to understand. Earlier you said that there was a crisis regarding discipline. I think there's, there, there's also misunderstanding regarding authority. Authority is not there for authority's sake. Authority is there because it's a given structure in our world that we have, that we have authority structures that are there to love and care for those who are, if you like, under them in, in, in authority. So when it comes to a teacher, when it comes to a parent, that parent authority is someone that loves them cares for them, has a sacrificial love, if you like, for that child. And so when that authority figure is leading them, is correcting them, is rewarding them, it all has to do with wanting the best for the child yes. and loving that child. And in the end, from a Christian point of view, when it comes to our college, we have a loving authority who is God, who is our Father in heaven. And who's on our side. Who's on our side. And when it comes to that, we're representative, if you like, of God's loving authority too. These are really valuable and important insights for parents, John, of, of any boys, way beyond Scots. Give them some strategies, some practical tips on how they can better structure discipline 
for their boys, for their life. Okay. Firstly, I think underlying everything that we've discussed today is just an unconditional love. That a boy can, uh, or a child is not going to do something where that love stops. It's always unconditional and we will love them no matter what. But whether it be at the school or at home, firstly, rules are important. Or if you like uh, agreed upon uh, ways that work at home and at school. So the boys need to know that. We need to teach them what the expectations are when you're watching television, what the expectations are when boys are having screen time, what the expectations are when they're playing in the playground. Firstly, they need to know that. And that's a, a security for the boys. Then they need to know if they go right or left and go against those rules, there's going to be consequences both positive and negative and there'll be rewards for walking in the right direction if you like through life and there's also going to be consequences when they leave school and when they're at school and when they're in the family so having those clear the rules the positive and negative consequences and understanding that the children are under loving authority and talk to them about what we're trying to lead them to, if you like, and that is to be self-disciplined as they grow up. Routines are important. Yeah, most important. The routine of a school day, when it comes to understanding what time the day starts, what the routine is as you walk into the classroom, what's going to be the next subject. Boys like to know exactly what's going to follow after each other. And it's the same at home. Routines are very important that there is a consistent procedure, if you like, when it comes to what's happening on Wednesday, what's going to happen on Saturday, of course it's not going to be exactly the same week after week but that brings security as rituals are rituals are very important in a child's life at home whether it be what's the example okay i'll give you an example we're ritual in our family there's the special rituals for example when it's easter we come home from church and we have our hot cross buns and that's something that our children even as adults come round to her home knowing that that particular ritual happens. But there's rituals that round the, round the dinner table. Yeah. And the importance of not having the television on is a ritual that we follow at our home. Yeah. And it's a time to talk and to discuss things. And it brings security to the child that we are family, we are one, and these rituals help build us up. With all of this, I'm sure it's the earlier you can start with this the better. Yeah. No use starting this when they're 18. No, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, we, we, we once had a parent not, not come to Scots, but at, a, at another school and brought them to us, uh, to the child to them, said, we haven't disciplined our child because we're going to leave that to the school. Oh, wow. How um, revealing. Uh, amazingly, that there wow. was that mindset, but I, I did have a little giggle when the, the principal replied, well, I hope we're not too late. We're never too late, Good but point. it's best to start as early as we can. Yeah. And the as, as mentioned before, when it comes to a classroom and when you have a disciplined classroom, not much discipline work really happens. It's just that the expectations are there and they're followed through each time in the classroom and Im in the family. Important that no one plays favourites in discipline. Yeah, absolutely. And boys particularly are alert to that. They'll Good. be alert to it in the classroom and they'll pick up if there's any favourites. So... If there is a warning and if there is a consequence for a particular behaviour, you can't overlook the next one where a, where a boy's done exactly the same thing. Always keeping in mind the personality and, and the needs of that child. Let me finally ask you to lift the veil on the John Creera story. <laughs> Did you ever struggle with discipline as yeah, a boy? I had a terrible struggle. My oh, parents really? said I was a home angel but a street devil. So I actually ran away from class in year oh, six. did you really? <laughs> I did. And here you are, a teacher at Scots College. Yeah, it's interesting. It's wow. very interesting. No, what I happened had, there? Well, I, had, uh, I came from a large family. So my older sister was a very compliant, intelligent lady, as my older brother was. But then I came along and I wasn't. And so I had the same teacher and she expected me to be exactly like my sister oh. and brother were. And it ended up that I ended up in the storeroom. I wasn't allowed to come into the classroom. In the storeroom. That's right. That's where my desk was. And so I ran away. Oh, my goodness. And I went home to mum and I said, I'm not going back there. She doesn't like me. And it's interesting. It, it hasn't had an effect on me even today that, you know, while we, we want children to have a disciplined life, it's very important to explain what the expectations are and to love them no matter what. Not much love there. No. <laughs> it's an interesting time. How's it had an impact on you? I suppose it's had an impact on me when I think about boys particularly. I think, they, I think when it comes to behaviour, they need a clear explanation. Boys don't think sometimes. When they're out in the playground, they don't think about their behaviour and their consequences. But when talking to them and teaching them, it's best to talk over things so that they get, they get a chance to have a say. Okay. And then you can see their context 
And then sometimes you can understand their, their, their reasoning behind sometimes their poor decisions and talk about how they can be best trained to make better decisions next time. So it's a complete learning. It's a learning process from the beginning to the end. But as long as we, we're unconditioning our love to our boys and also positive that they will make it, they'll pick that up. What great lessons from a rich life, John Creer. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Luke. It's been a great conversation. Yeah. If you'd like more information about growing your boy into a fine young man, you can subscribe to receive really useful articles and news from the Scots College. It's free and offered to every parent who wants the best for their boy in their journey to manhood. In your internet search engine, enter the Scots College e-newsletter to subscribe. I'm Lee Hatcher. Hope you'll join me again next week on the Brave Hearts Bold Minds podcast, Growing Fine Young Men. Now, you can't have seen this, but throughout this interview, John Creera's hand and his finger has been hovering dangerously close to this button. He hasn't hit it yet. Thank the Lord for that. Now's the time, John. Thank you.